All right. Well, now it's time to dig into our big roundtable topic for this week, which is going to be focused on Hearthstone because, yeah, this week uh, we've talked about it quite a bit. Uh, Monday was Hearthstone's 10 year anniversary. So there was a lot of events and things going on for that. A lot of streams, Twitch drops, all of that sort of stuff. And then Wednesday was the Theorycraft streams all day for the new expansion, Whizbang's Workshop, uh, which two of us did play in those theory crafting streams. And Dankist did actually like spend a bunch of time theory crafting some decks. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to play any of those. I didn't. I don't know how, but like this expansion for me, like theory crafting, this is like my fifth or sixth one. Every time that I have participated, I'm like, okay, cool. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Bam, bam, bam. I do that. Get it knocked out. This time I was like, I want to do this. Oh yeah. I wanted to do that thing. Oh my gosh. I forgot about that thing that I wanted to do. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even play take a stats decks. Oh, huh. and then like, by, and then it just flew by and I was like, I didn't get to do like half of the things I even wanted to try or like the cards or classes that I wanted to try. And I was like, where did that six hours go? Like it just flew it by. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, I that tried to weird, give but... Dankus some repu uh, some some representation. I think I probably played like fourteen games of the decks that you crafted uh, or theory crafted, Dankus. So uh, you got some representation. Uh, one of your decks, I I made sure to name Dankus Dad uh, <laughs> uh, showcase just, that. So just, you were still on make, the theory crafting stream. Just to make sure that when you lost, people knew it was me. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it won half of its games, though. <laughs> they also knew it was you and it won. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, okay. Um, also, just as, like, a couple of caveats for people who maybe didn't get to catch a lot of those Hearthstone streams or who might be kind of new to it or not know, like, what the theory crafting streams entail. Uh, so it was a bunch of different creators that got invited to participate. And all of the streamers that were playing, we got sent information for uh, basically this like tournament server is kind of what, what they dub it as, event server. Uh, so we were on the future patch. So that means rotation in, in this patch, right? Like rotation had already happened. The new core set cards were in. All of the Whizbangs workshop cards were in. And in these, uh, in these clients, you have access to all of the cards, including all of the different like variations of artwork, the different like styles of cards. You have like a f an entirely full collection of regular golden, diamond, signature cards, everything. So you can go oh and god, look diamond at- Diamond King plush. Diamond <laughs> King plush, oh my the god. The best. Oh my <laughs> yes. god. So it is really a chance, you know, all of the like cosmetics, like hero skins, all that stuff. So it's supposed to be really a chance to show off a lot of the new cards, the new artwork, the, you know, the different like the diamonds and the signature cards, um, show off the new hero skins, that kind of stuff. And uh, with the deck building, there is a requirement that you have to include 10 cards from the new expansion or more, but minimum 10 cards from the new expansion to kind of show that. So this isn't necessarily going to be like, oh, these decks that did really well on Theorycraft Day are going to be the decks that just like stomp everybody on day one of the expansion because people are going to build different decks and try different things when the expansion actually launches. So, you know, mm -hmm. it might give us an idea of the power level of some cards. It might give us an idea of, you know, the kind of cards or deck styles that people might be interested in but it's definitely not an indication at all of what's going to actually be good or what's actually going to be um, popular or anything like that once the expansion launches. And especially the first, like, I would say week, maybe even two weeks of an expansion mm -hmm. usually is like all over the place. <laughs> like the meta changes oh, so sure. fast uh, over that time. So because there's just so many more people playing and info is getting out even faster. So. Uh, just wanted to like put all those caveats out before we jump in uh, to talk about that. And the other thing I will mention is that for this Theorycraft, uh, there is a new legendary card called Whizbang. Uh, he is 
is he the magnificent? Oh my god. Splendiferous? Splendiferous, that's right. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I can't remember the, the word. Uh and this card is you put him in your deck, and it's literally a one out of one deck. Like that's all you can put in the deck. And you start a game, and when the game starts, it will be a one and eleven chance for you to get like it's random between the eleven decks that are kind of pre-built by Blizzard that you'll you'll start the game with. So you don't know what deck you're going to start with when you get in the game. It randomly gives you one of those 11 decks and you play with the cards that Blizzard built for that deck. Right. So we were allowed to play that. Uh, the decks didn't all necessarily have a lot of new cards. So that was a little disappointing and kind of a, like a little bit of a jarring experience to, to play that and then be trying to play in a theory crafting event with like, Hey, this deck doesn't look like it has new stuff. Uh, so <laughs> that did happen, give or take. Uh, it was interesting and kind of cool, though. Like, I, yeah. I enjoyed the few Whizbang games that I had, but there were obviously a huge disparity in the power level mm -hmm. of the decks that you get. Like, if you yes. got the Warlock one from Whizbang, it was like, oh, okay, you won. Uh, <laughs> and some of the other ones, it was like, oh, you lost. <laughs> yeah. And Correct me if I'm wrong. This one was different where the last Whizbang had deck recipes or just valid constructed decks. Mm -hmm. And most of the decks I saw for this one seemed like they had some sort of gimmick or broke normal deck construction rules. And stuff. Yes, like it would be literally yeah. impossible to construct one of those Whizbang decks and take it to ladder. Uh, except for what I guess the one where he gives you a copy of your opponent's deck, but obviously, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. the other like 10 are some mechanic that is impossible to create and queue up. Yep. Uh, a couple examples of that. I did try a few games of Whizbang. The first deck it gave me was the Hunter deck, which has two copies of every legendary, which yeah, normal deck building, you can only include one copy of a legendary. So that Yeah, I got a Connie twice that. and I was so confused. I was like, <laughs> wait, what? He already yes. did that. What how was this happening? And yeah. I was like, oh um, right. Yeah. And then the priest deck is a deck that's built around the card Astral Automaton, which is a card that for each like copy of it that you play, all of the automatons get um buffed, essentially. And you start with seven copies of that card in your deck. Normally you can only have two, right? So <laughs> that's, that also definitely breaks the rules there. So yeah, those decks like are very kind of specialized. Um, but yeah, I wanted to just like put that out there as well that we were allowed to play with that. People definitely tried it out, you know, just to see like what it actually kind of looked like and how it actually kind of played. Um, but I think for the majority of the games, I would say people were actually like, building decks and, and trying things out. So um, I want to start with Dankist. Now you built a whole bunch of decks for like all of the classes. You kind of built, you know, all of these deck lists. Ron said he played some, but uh, what was kind of your approach with taking these these decks and kind of building them and theory crafting them? Because as you said, like sometimes the theory crafting and then not getting to play them or see them played is, is a bit different. Yeah. So. I think that for this set in particular, the requirement of having 10 new cards was a bit more difficult than I had anticipated. So generally speaking, there are some power level reasons, but the synergy reasons actually surprised me. So a lot of these cards themselves don't have the full typical self-contained package that most expansions come with. They rely on a lot of support from outside this set. And it would be difficult when you have, say, four to six cards from Whizbang's workshop that really work well together. And those cards really want to be with 20 cards from another set or from the other cards in standard. So like just as an example, one of these was Warlock. So to build a Wheel of Death deck, around that card a lot of the synergies come from other sets especially like titans and festival of legends you have phantom you have forge of wills you have photographer fizzle to keep your empty deck going you have the symphony of sins there are all of these cards that you know you really want to fit in this deck 
but you need to make room for other things. So it was tough to kind of, you know, make the design work probably in the way that the Hearthstone team intended while also making the deck, you know, function and play well under the rules of the theory craft. Yeah, I I do feel like this uh, new set doesn't necessarily like this is kind of a a celebratory throwback type of expansion, right? Like a lot of the cards are kind of a throwback or homage to cards from Hearthstone's past because it's coming out at the, pretty much the same time as Hearthstone's 10 year anniversary. Um, so to me, at least the the whole expansion kind of feels like more of a hodgepodge of cards, mm -hmm. I would say, rather than having like that, yeah, like, okay, here's, you know, four cards for Death Knight that have like this package. Here's four cards for Death Knight that have this package. And then like, here's two additional Death Knight cards yes. um, that we've kind of seen another expansion. So yeah, it did feel pretty interesting, but I will say from the playing, now I'm, I'm curious if Ron had a similar experience. I feel like what I played in the theory crafting stream and what I played against the games uh, and like the win conditions and the key cards in the decks to me felt uh, very class heavy. I didn't notice a ton of like, oh, hey, here's this like these three neutrals that like everybody seems to be playing kind of like we we do have sometimes that happens. I felt like I saw a lot of like class cards, a lot of class card combinations of things happening. And honestly, I liked that. I was like, that feels good because it doesn't feel like, you know, everybody's just going to have like the same neutral cards and like, OK, here you go. Like, start with those neutrals and then build your deck. Uh, did you have a similar experience to that, Ron? I did. Yeah. Um, I don't really feel like there is a ubiquitous neutral in Whizbang's workshop, at least as far as like what was regularly apparent on um theory crafting day if there is one it's gotta be zilliax zilliax would be in like every yeah. deck potentially um and it could be just that like the zilliaxes that were being run just weren't drawn because it's a really small sample size or um they were too expensive and the game ended earlier than people play them i don't remember seeing it played a whole lot but i know i had zilliax in a bunch of my decks and i pretty much rarely ever drew it um so it could be that but like there isn't another card that really jumps out to me as like a neutral that was going to be everywhere um yeah there are a lot of class heavy things there are some returning like core neutrals i put leroy in some decks because i love hunter and uh i was doing you know aggressive hunter things and i figured a five mana six attack charge probably be helpful for that strategy um so, like, I played a lot of Leroy, but I, I didn't see a, a lot of people playing Leroy against me. Um, yeah. Yeah. By the yeah. way, Dankest, I did have a very fun Zilliax moment with your Shaman deck. Uh, interestingly, the um, copying your deck does not tell me what Zilliax you built. So I had to build my own and just I was like, all right, well, I'll figure it out. And hopefully <laughs> this is his idea, too. So I picked oh, the no. one that copied itself because it's a battle cry. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, we want the battle cry. And then I just made it big, I think, or gave it like, no, I probably gave it like Lifesteal, Rush, Divine See, Shield, all that you, stuff. You're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you did it. I did it. it. Hey, right I did it. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was like, that, that feels like it makes sense would be the one. And then I got to do the thing and it was really fun. I summoned like four lifesteal rush Zilliaxes with divine shield and taunt and everything. It immediately got cleared, but it was really cool to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they instantly Fantastic. cleared the board and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was I, like, I, I'm pretty I, sure this beats them if they don't clear it. Oh, they just cleared it. I, I did win that game though. And that was great. You know, there were for yeah. neutrals, like I know that we this set doesn't really have an Astalor or Ignis that just goes in so many decks and ends the game and is the card you see after. Mm -hmm. But I know for neutral win conditions, the one that I actually heard a decent amount about is uh Geppetto and Tentacles in Battlecry Shaman. Or Chaos oh. Tentacles. So oh my. I don't know oh, if crazy. you guys have seen this, and there's a little bit of risk because you have to make it past the wheel of death. 
on eight. But if you make it to 10, there's a 50-50 chance of casting Sunset Volley with your Tendril, which is deal 10 damage split among all enemies and summon a 10 drop. So with Shutter Block, you can pretty quickly get up there because each of those three casts will be ascending in cost, capping at right. 10, and copying Sunset Volley is not damaging the enemy hero. So you can do some pretty nifty stuff there, and Highlander Warrior also could do something similar with uh, Yog saron So I don't know if it'll make it far past the theory craft, but uh, Chaotic Tendrils might be the fun neutral way to defeat your opponent with multiple one damage pings that you're missing with rotation that is a little absurd yeah no i can <laughs> i can see it happening though i did actually run into someone who was doing that in the theory craft i just killed them before they got to that point so i didn't really get to see the full concept or like mm -hmm. figure out that that was the plan but uh i did see them play a shutter block and then uh they played one of the tendrils and I think they were on like four at the time. And I was like, is this going to cast four three times? We're just going to go four, five, six. And it went four, five, six. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's yeah. kind of scary. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mentioned earlier about uh, not getting to do everything I wanted. I wanted to play Geppetto and I didn't even, I realized Aww. like as I hit the six hours and I went, oh no, I never did a Geppetto thing. Cause I really wanted to <laughs> try Geppetto because it seems like such a fun card and like so many different ways that you can use it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, there's I definitely, it was hard to not, I played a little bit of Geppetto and it was hard to make my brain think that it was not going to be playing one cost things or give me one cost things. It was one attack or one health. So I expected. Because I remember I had it in like a priest deck, a uh, dragon priest deck. It was like my one game of dragon priest. And I was like, oh, and then I'll get the location back that costs one. And I played Geppetto and he didn't give me the location that costs one. And I'm like, <laughs> right, it's it's minions. It's one cost or it's one attack and one co uh, health yeah. minions. Oops. Yeah. And there yeah. are some like cool minions, too, that are more expensive or value that you can get back. Like for Highlander Paladin or slower Paladin builds, you can get back things like Amidas and Kobold Miner. And I think of Ooh. my theory crafts that were most competitive, I think Mining Paladin was probably the one that I felt happiest with. And, you know, that's not exactly a Whizbangs Workshop archetype, but it does actually use the cards from the set really nicely and look like a functional deck with those in them. So... That one might actually be a real one you can try on the first day when the set comes out next week. Paladin looked pretty um, pretty well positioned. I didn't play a whole lot of it, but I didn't lose a game on Paladin. And mm -hmm. I may have queued into one or two Paladins, and I don't recall beating them either. Yeah, uh, looked playing, fairly strong. Were you playing Highlander or one of the uh, Aura? Um, I played like one Mining Paladin, I think, and then one Highlander Paladin. And mm -hmm. each of them looked like very solid. Yeah. Yeah, but... That's yeah, interesting. Um, I, I did run... I ran some Paladin and I ran into some other Paladin. Uh, I will say... I was excited for the auras and like doing the whole like aura kind of thing and like increasing the duration of your auras. And now they have changed it so that you can, you can have the same aura out twice. You can have two copies of it in play at the same time. So I was like, oh my gosh, the new seven cost one that at the end of the turn is going to summon a six cost minion. And at one point I got two of those out and I was like, I'm going to get two six cost minions. This is going to be great. And man, the six cost minions feel pretty bad. I was very double brands, couple of two I fours. Was, yeah, I was very <laughs> disappointed. I was like, oh man, this is this is not doing a whole lot right now. Uh, didn't feel like there was a lot of taunt six cost minions. A lot of them must have like rotated out. Uh, I didn't dig deep into like looking at what the six cost minions exactly were, but I was like, oh, this is way more disappointing than what I was hoping for. Uh, so that, that felt like a bummer. Um, but 
I think for Paladin and a couple of the classes, I think for me, a lot of the actual like hand buff and buffing stuff ended up being a bit more um, powerful and consistent than I expected it to be. Like generally, and in the past, we haven't necessarily had hand buff stuff that was super great or like as consistent as a, as a pop off that you would want. But I saw. Uh, we have Judge, who he does a lot of arena. He does a lot of like off meta decks. He's a very good player. I ran into him playing Paladin and uh, I forgot Musclotron was a card. And that card buffs everything in your hand plus two plus two. And so, yeah, he was just like buffing everything in his hand and playing a whole bunch of like big minions in Paladin. I was like, oh, this is gross. <laughs> and then I died to a bunch of yeah. big stuff on the board. Um, there was. Uh, I tried, I saw other people trying it out, um, like a hand buff Death Knight with the new like buffing your undeads, uh, the mm -hmm. new like puppeteer card and the mini that you get from that, like replaying that and some other buff cards and using uh, a combo to like buff up the new uh, Darkthorn Quilter. That's a Quillborn minion uh, that will at the end of the turn deal its attack damage split among all enemies. So it can also hit face. And that was actually doing a bit more than I expected it to uh, and had more like synergy with the hand buffs. Um, there was a, a lot of pop offs with uh, Warrior that I tried, like not as much of the taunt. I took the deck recipe for Warrior, which had like all the taunt stuff and a lot of like the taunt mech stuff. And I took out some of the taunt stuff and kind of just focused more on like the taunt and taunt mech things specifically and got to do quite a bit of popping off with the new card training dummy. Yes. <laughs> and I even had one turn where like I played mm -hmm. the uh, boom wrench weapon that w the death rattle of that weapon will trigger the death rattle of a mech on your board. I played that out and then equipped the mini version of the boom wrench to set off the death rattle of the first one. Then I re-equipped another copy of the boom wrench to set off the, the death rattle of the mini version. Then I played the second mini to pop up. And then I got to swing with a weapon and attack after like four triggers of the training dummy dealing a bunch of damage. And yeah, definitely ended the game and killed my opponent. But that was like, Seems strong. That was yeah. cool. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how consistently we'll be able to do that or if like anybody else managed to get that to work, but I did and I thought it was super fun. Uh, but I was kind of surprised because it felt like a lot of that like kind of combo-y pop-off turns and in, in the hand buffing was, um, was just a, a bit more consistent and a little bit stronger across multiple classes than I expected it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's somewhat common with the theory crash where the meta is a bit more slowing and f slower and forgiving to that than it might be on ladder but we'll see because i think That's the last time hand buff was good was really rush warrior probably or i guess depending on how much or maybe the buff paladins yeah. with the uh with the bannerman but usually it like <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> Yeah, but usually hand buff has been good when you can get access to it at three or less mana. And Paladin has a few ways to do that, but a lot of the new tools are more expensive. So it would certainly be a first if they turn out to be really strong, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Yeah. I do think, well, there's one specific hand buff strategy that does really jump out to me, and that's with Rainbow Death Knight. And mm -hmm. that one... Uh, I was impressed with like how much that scales and how quickly it scales. Um, the fact that the hand buff minion for death Knight is also something that gives you a mini is huge Yes, because the mini will get buffed by the death rattle in the first place, uh, which in and of itself isn't really all that relevant, but it, it matters a little bit. Yeah, um, and then the the main thing is that it's really cheap so then you can play that for one mana and you can combo it with the uh the 
yodeler that double triggers the battle cry. So that comes down and you're mega buffing your hand and they had to kill the minion in the first place, which buffs your hand. And then the other one's on the board. And if that dies, it buffs your hand. So like at one point I, w- I remember I was playing against pizza and he was playing this rainbow, um, hand buff death knight and he kept making like giant stats over and over and i ate through all of them and i was like okay i think we're fine now and then he drops an 1822 taunt and i was like oh my god dude stop <laughs> like it was it was pretty cool like uh i think that strategy does have some very legitimate like strong application with a better hand he might have just completely run me over like because he could have had the um the minion that copies itself and Mm -hmm. you play that after mega buffs and you're looking at two of those you know 15 18 20 attack and uh, about as much health stats they also have taunt by the way you know so it's yeah that's rough that's rough to deal with you just need kind of over the top damage or completely unconditional removal because the stats are way too big for stat based removals so it looks competitive i think i agree and you know one of the archetypes weaknesses when they sort of you know had that fringe support with path of arthas was that it didn't have card draw on rune so mm-hmm. you would be able to play your hand buffs, do your thing, and then run out of stuff. But this time, that's not really the case. They've added the hero card, the uh, Headless Horseman, that will eventually draw you more gas. You have, uh, what is it? The 2-4 uh, that when an undead dies, uh, you draw a card. That's gone from a single frost rune to no rune conditions at all. So you can play that with something like crop rotation or just the bodies that you're summoning to refill your hand. I mean, generally, that is like the combo that you want, though, is just acolyte and crop rotation. And that is something that's pretty much available to any death knight that runs what a single unholy rune, at least because the crop rotation is single unholy. So that's a really good card draw combo available for death knight as it happens four rushing one ones for three mana are often useful and relevant too so uh the reload potential is huge and yep. then they do their other things that they need to do yeah be poisonous yeah. make trades they they do it mm-hmm. that get you corpses it's, oh yeah it's, it's really good. annoying yeah. when they give them poisonous too oh my yeah. god <laughs> you know yeah. one thing i will say about the headless horseman though you gotta draw him i played four mm. games Four games, and I never even drew the headless horseman. Unlucky. And I was I played so one sad. game of it, like, and oh. I drew the horseman. <laughs> I was very happy. Uh, I mean, you know, it's a legendary. It's only one card in your deck of thirty. But you know, and, and with card games, there is that variance. But I was very sad. It was like this is the theory crafting stream, right? Like I'm trying to show off these new cards and I want to see how these new cards work. And I never even drew him. Not even drew him to see him in my hand. It was like. Oh, that was just, that was so saddening. I think the official terminology for that is a skill issue. (laughs) (laughs) True, true. Uh, I should have just gotten good. Oh, dang it. (laughs) My bad. Okay. I'm I'm still working on Uh, the skill issues myself. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so I'm also kind of curious. So, Dankus, um, you mentioned when I was talking about the warrior and kind of pulling off that combo and talking about buffs that if the meta is a bit slower, it usually allows more room for that. What would you consider as a slower meta? Like turn wise or like, you know. So I think that the way I tend to think about it is the turn at which you need to respond to your opponent's board before your health total is put over the edge. And in the past, we've had metas as fast as turn two where you have a druid who is playing uh, the quillbore that discounts your taunt minions. And if you don't have a response to that turn, the, the game's over, no matter what your strategy is later down the line. There are some metas like Barons that was, I would say, was notably slow, where even a deck like Rush Warrior that is winning with stats on board is not really assembling their threatening board until turn six or seven. And You know, that let decks like Control Priest, I think, really thrive if they can answer the big board with a single AoE. 
and that made them really strong. This meta that we're in right now on ladder, not in the theory craft, you have something like Sludge Warlock, where on turn three with the Barrel of Sludge or the turn four Waste Remover says, you have an answer for this right now. And if you don't, the game is over. And we're around that speed where it's like turn three or four tends to be the pivotal turn in the Hearthstone game, I would say. And I think that with Workshop and the Theorycraft, at least from the games I saw, the pivotal turns seem to be more around six or seven, where decks would start to do their powerful thing and really put the other player on the back foot. Am I crazy here? Am I off my rocker? Or does that sound accurate to you guys? Because, Ron, I know you're I, the one who is really building up the sample size right now on ladder. So I'm curious more what your thoughts on that yeah. are. Uh, I mean, current ladder, uh, we probably don't need to like spend too much time diving into because we've got about four days remaining in yeah. current Hearthstone ladder before it this iteration of it will be gone forever. Um, but I mean, I kind of agree that you do have a lot of things that, that wind up being like, do you have your early answer or will this snowball? But I think there's enough other alternative strategies of things that like try to get to a certain point and stabilize and go crazy that make it more late game. I would say it's probably closer to like a turn four or five rather than a turn three or four in mm -hmm. the current meta but it's still pretty close and fast. And then as far as the theory crafting goes, it's always going to be slower in theory crafting. Everyone's trying out new stuff, stuff that doesn't quite work, that doesn't quite synergize all that well. There's the restriction of you have to have 10 new expansion cards, and sometimes the power level or the sy synergies combining with the things that you're trying to do don't really add up as much. I would have put theory crafting as probably more like a turn eight is really where like you feel like okay this game's either won or lost by this point now if i haven't done the thing or they haven't done the thing whatever it happens to be yeah and that makes sense like i know like for me like the things i'm thinking about are does paladin play their tradable duplicate guy on six does the warrior get multiple triggers of their training dummy on seven like mm. those were kind of the things that i feel like i was seeing that were usually going to swing a game with board based decks and you know now control. there there were a couple beast hunter games though um <laughs> where the game was over on turn three it was like oh my god pretty much yeah uh, or turn four i think <laughs> yeah, yeah the i played up. against corbett once and he had double location by turn four and he went wow. first and it was a hunter mirror and he was just on fire like every everything was like yeah. lined up perfectly and i'm like i have no chance I have absolutely zero chance to win this game. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> one drop, location, location, it's one GG, drop, dogs, yeah. and boom. Yeah, yeah that'll, that'll get you. Interesting. I wonder if it's just the decks that like I was trying out, but I do feel like I had quite a few games that were ending. Like, I mean, you know, the one of us was blowing up between turn six and eight, maybe six and nine, which is a little bit slower compared to like, you know, a game ending play on turn two or three but i mean the actual like one of the people was blowing up like the game was over over at like turn six to eight which um i felt yeah. like was pretty fast that um, seems about for, right, or a little bit yeah yeah like it, it and i had certainly games that went longer than that and games that went faster than that even um but yeah, it was it was kind of interesting though because it did feel like some games there was some back and forth. Uh, I don't know if anybody else saw it or ran into it. I don't know if you did, Ron, but and of course I ran into him like six times or something. I was sad. Uh, I faced McBanter face seriously at least six times over the Rough. and three <laughs> or four of the games were back to back. Like I faced him back to back to back, and I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, stop. He was playing a druid deck that definitely was a much more like later game druid, but he would get to the point of being able to play out ANR, the Titan, and then he would play the um, 
Oh my gosh, now I'm forgetting the name of the card. The, cover the, artist, the, probably. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Cover artist, the four Titan mana. Refresh cover artist, do crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah, and was also playing Zola. So he put a cup, you know, really, and was really playing either. the, yeah, it was just all it's about like, up, <laughs> and it had the spell damage stuff in it too. So it was like, really, he could, oh, yeah. Really powerful Whizbangs workshop synergies right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was like, if he didn't get the A&R copying stuff, then he would just go all in with the spell damage stuff from the new set. And then yeah. be able to like, oh, here's a six damage swipe to your face that's also dealing three damage to your minions. Or even five and two was was pretty consistent that I saw when I played him. And then it's like, mm -hmm. if you even survived that and got to the later game, then he would just pop off with like a bunch of A and R's. And it was like, wow, I don't like this at all. Like from the person yeah. playing against it, it was a terrible experience. I was like, I really hope that that is not something that we're gonna see because that felt really bad, especially to play against it over and over and over like that too. So I was like, if that becomes a popular deck and people can consistently do that, that will probably need addressing. But again, we'll see, like, it's always hard to actually judge like how good this stuff's gonna be or, or whatnot. And maybe when we get into it, the meta will be even faster. Cause on the other side, I also faced into Pocket Train who played a pirate rogue and yes, killed me on like too. turn four or five. <laughs> oh yeah, that one's that super deck, fast. That deck seems yeah. very powerful. Pirate so Rogue looks good. Yeah, and I don't think that that deck had a ton of legendaries just based on, I mean, of course I, I only saw a little bit of it, but if that deck doesn't have a ton of legendaries, it's a little bit more easy to play. It's more aggressive and like low cost to craft, then that's also going to be a deck that's more accessible to more players, which is likely mm -hmm. going to be a reason for it to be even more popular on ladder <laughs> once the expansion drops. Really? So yeah, we, we might be seeing yeah. things like that. And then if those types of decks are popular, there's not going to be time to get to a and R and copying a and R. So. Yeah. And like, you know, there are some decks in this meta that you're just not going to be able to see like sludge warlock, Odin warrior, these are decks that are very, very good still. And I would say are likely to be among the best decks day one. But, you know, you just don't have the card slots to build their most powerful versions in Theorycraft. And, you know, we will get a rude reminder next Tuesday that they are not going anywhere. It's uh, true. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you won't see them all on theory crafting, obviously, just because there's not enough new cards to warrant like doing that. And it's like, you know, we've seen this. We don't need to see this for theory crafting when we're showcasing stuff. But yeah, there's there's a lot of strong stuff that isn't going anywhere um, that will probably still wind up being like sort of a meta tyrant. I will say out of the the newer ones, though, the spell damage druid and the super fast pirate rogue um will probably wind up finding their way to become contenders um dragon rider the one game that i played of druid just so happened to be against you i think where i i had like a million spell damage or something yes. i couldn't do all of it for lethal i kept being like barely off like a couple of times so i'm like whatever i'm just gonna send it <laughs> uh yeah. and then um I, I remember I faced Pocket as well, and he was on the Pirate Rogue, and I think I was playing like a Highlander Hunter, and I didn't have any clue how insanely dead I was about to be if he just drew Sonya. Yeah, and I that... played Mukla, and then his top deck was Sonya, and he burned Sonya, and it was hilarious. Because then I wound Fantastic. up seeing all of these one mana damage cards and different things that he obviously would have Omega killed me with had I not like insanely high rolled the only card in his deck that mattered to get burned. So that was pretty funny. <laughs> so you guys were also <laughs> playing with the bugged version of Sonya, correct? Yeah, yeah. Sonya, apparently, um, if you discount her to one uh and you play her she will give you a copy of herself at zero which i did once because people told me you could do it and i'm like what this is crazy and yeah it's clearly a bug that they will um 
I'm sure fix hopefully before the expansion actually releases. Right. Wh- yes, which I think no. is another reason why they're also trying to get like even more creators doing this theory crafting because it's a good chance for them to actually test out and see if there's any issues and get some of those things fixed before it drops for everybody. Um, right. I yeah. think there was also a, an issue with Crane Game, the Warlock spell that will like draw two demons from your deck. Um, so there, there was an issue with that as well, either not drawing the demons or, or some sort of issue with that. So uh, that could be something that people try out more after the expansion launches because it was bugged and so it should work properly <laughs> when the expansion comes out. But, you know, we'll, we'll see about that. Um, I did have one more question talking about like the expansion as kind of a whole and the keyword. What do you guys think, or what what are your impressions of the new keyword miniaturize? So it's really powerful. I think that that's my thought of it. And like some of the minions are really, really hard to play that first time. But once you've done it, oh boy, it gets so good. And this is more relevant, I think, for the demon hunter. But I also learned that it is not quite mechanically identical to battle cry because it puts the minion in your hand in the same location, which is not always relevant, but there will be one time when you need to know it. So yeah, that that. weirded me out when that happened. (laughs) I was expecting it to show up at the far right of my hand and I'm like, where's my minion? I'm like, Oh wait, it's here. What? Yes. Uh, Yeah. It holds the spot from where you played the first copy. So yeah, like outcast and stuff will be impacted by, by that for sure. Um, but yes, uh, miniaturize, I think is a extremely powerful effect. Um, it's just the, the basic concept of Hearthstone and what makes cards good. Basically, cheap equals good when the effect is good so a lot of times the card itself in large part balancing wise probably because they gave it miniaturize the card itself that you're playing isn't necessarily that good at the time that you play it but you need to just sort of take a turn off or have a turn that's not great in order to set up for a turn that's insane. Like for instance, you play a five mana two six. If you're death Knight uh, that has taunt and does a little bit of buffing in your hand. Sure. But then because you did that, you have a one mana card that you combo with another card and you're extra triggering those battle cries. And now the minions in your hand are huge, uh, that kind of thing. And, yeah. um, Tarim's another one that seemed like super nuts Um, where I remember I had like six mana and I was playing Paladin and my opponent made either it was either it might have happened twice, but I, I feel like I definitely recalled either like a huge minion and definitely I remember there was an Amethyst up. Uh, yeah. and it's like, oh, well, this is easy. I'm just going to tear my own minion. Uh, that's not that large and then i'm gonna get the one one and i'm gonna use the one one on their amethyst and i also had like crusaders are up so you know and a board full of minions so they're thinking oh i'm safe because i played amethyst well no you're not because now it's a one one haha like that card is crazy good so yeah and it just varies on the effect but miniaturize in general just as a term super strong depending on what effect you get definitely something that can easily break games wide open yeah and like i know for me the one that stands out just on paper is like chia drake for a druid that oh yeah card, the four mana card is god awful <laughs> like, just being completely yeah. honest it's a no mission venter 10 years down the road most of the time but when you get one mana spell damage plus one or draw a card that you can work in with three mana swipe or with Malfurion's gift and get a clear, it is so, so nice. And, you know, like you were talking about that druid just being able to have access to two damage AOE all the time is terrifying. And, you know, miniaturize and location give you that. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Druid no longer having a board flood weakness is always scary. Um, yes. <laughs> and swipe being reprinted in the same kind of set where they can um, 
spell damage and double spell damage with their legendary minion or cheap spell damage in combination with other things. Uh, even just as simple using the miniaturize on the Chia Drake uh, alongside the seven mana card, the Owlonius. Um, yeah. You're, you're spending eight mana and because you're Druid, you usually have lots of ways to not actually be anywhere close to running out of mana after already spending eight mana. And then you can have a handful of spell damage and go nuts. Yeah. I, I will take one second to say though, that with Owlonius, I think it's the most disappointed I've been in the t- development team for the set, just because the flavor text was not step two, draw the owl. I was really <laughs> anticipating that. Oh, and I was dude. crushed to see that that wasn't it. But maybe next time. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to echo the sentiment that uh, the miniaturize felt pretty strong. Um, I will say, too, just in terms of, like, how it played and the cards, like, fitting into decks and just into Hearthstone in general, this, for me, felt like one of the most, like, naturally Hearthstone keywords that we've had in a while. Like, you know, some of the other keywords, you're like, how does this work? This seems a little weird. Or you really have to, like, think about it. This one was just like, here it is, go. And it, it just feels like it fits so well with Hearthstone and like how Hearthstone plays that it just, for me, almost like by the time that I was finishing the stream, I was like, you could tell me that this was a new keyword or you could tell me this keyword came out six years ago and I would believe either one because it just, it felt mm. like it had been in the game for so long. Like it just fits yeah. so naturally. So I was really happy about that because to me, that feels like it's a successful keyword, you know, or it's a, it's a success mm-hmm. and I like seeing that when you have a new mechanic or a new thing, especially after it seems like some people were kind of disappointed with some of the cards, like reusing a keyword from the past or even like essentially having a keyword from the past as its ability without using the actual keyword. Uh, So I I know a lot of people are kind of disappointed in that. So for me also like, the new keyword feeling so good to play and just feeling like a natural fit for the game was like, okay, good. Like almost breathe, like relief, like, okay, good. That's, that's a good start. (laughs) So yeah, I really like to miniaturize. Yeah. I also don't think that they have really gone everywhere they can with the design space Mm -hmm. and where the ways that you can play with a one mana one, one version of the same card are really, really interesting. And I'm sure we'll see more of it in the mini set. But this is a keyword that I definitely think they could come back to since they have not really fully tapped the well of what it can do. This would be, I mean, in one way, it's kind of scary if it becomes an evergreen keyword just for maybe some power levels of the game. uh, And we accelerate further to our inevitable Yu-Gi-Oh! destination. But um like i don't know it's it's a keyword that i i think i would still kind of like to see become like a an evergreen type reused one like they did with tradable and some of the others that were uh introduced at different stages of hearthstone's history it's really cool and it's really fun to play with um it's it's also part of the reason why i am evaluating paladin as high as i currently am because paladin got way more miniaturizes than everyone else and i think they'll be able to exploit that tigress plushie yeah. is a very good card and then you notice it yes. has miniaturize as well yeah. <laughs> you're like whoa hold up <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no, that one's pretty good the paladins do a little cheating they don't need to pay an upfront cost for miniaturize it's just like here's a great card that also gives you another great card okay so everyone knows the original Zilliax, right it's a taunt, lifesteal, divine shield that rushes. Okay, here's my official analysis. This is this is very in-depth analysis insights on Tigress plushie. It's Zilliax, but a plushie. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> it's good, amazing. Good analysis. It's, it's it a is. great card. It was super fun to play with that yesterday. Also, like buffing it with the uh, the painter's weapon. And then you get to play it and it's even buffed up. You're like, this is fantastic. I love this plushie. And also the the one one mini plushie. 
sounds so adorable. It has like the cutest <laughs> sound effects. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Best card, best card. Yeah, also the, totally like mid-range paladin main here. Like <laughs> if we could have mid-range paladin in every meta, I would I would be a happy girl. <laughs> Just yeah. saying. I, I found myself speaking of like cute cards when I was playing Hunter. I just like sometimes would just stare at the Diamond King plush in my hand and just like watch the anime. And like oh, my God. opponent would be doing something. I'm just like looking at King plush. I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, he's getting the train. He's getting the train. Wait, is it my turn? Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you guys happen so to good. see the flavor text on the Tigress plushie? I didn't look at it. The sheer value of this card is undeniable <laughs> oh my goodness wow <laughs> well played. someone's proud of themselves uh, <laughs> referencing the uh shervala from the past yeah classic <laughs> we'll start wrapping up our uh conversation here get our final thoughts about the uh, upcoming expansion about theory crafting dankestad first what is your overall thought overall impression of the expansion of the theory crafting, all, all of that, which is your just, just overall thoughts here. So, I mean, I think that this theory craft went really well uh, in terms of relative to past ones. I know we've had some uh, interesting decks that floated around that may have taken away from the excitement of the new set proper. Like I think of the uh, hipster shadow step deck that we saw a couple of years or last year that kind of uh, ran away with things, but it went really well. And I think that the set looks cool. I just hope that it hits the right power level once, once it hits live servers. That's, and I'm sure that once April rolls around, it will be there. Okay. All right, Ron, what's, uh, what's your thoughts here? Overall thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Like I had mixed feelings when I first saw the cards, but getting to play with the cards a little bit and theory crafting, um, definitely got me a lot more hopeful for, uh, the new set. And I am as always pretty biased towards like Hunter sensibilities. And, uh, there, there's a lot that's really cool with that deck that I, I feel like I undervalued at first or not deck necessarily, but like multiple different directions you can go and the aggressive styles that i like uh i think are supported and there's a whole lot of different interesting things there's callbacks to the previous 10 years that miniaturizes a really cool keyword that i think has the potential to be one of like the better keywords they've ever had um it's it's really interesting and there's also like a uh a new hero card which i really enjoy anytime they do something like that but it doesn't seem like overly insane uh P i remember people complained that like if every class is a hero card then it's just race until you play your hero card and do that strategy we're not really going in that direction um first impression is I, I think it's kind of a hit i think there will be a lot of really interesting things to do that'll be a lot of fun so i'm excited to dive into it and see how it plays out but good impression so far nice awesome yeah i i think that my initial impressions are pretty similar to that um i think just off of as dankest phrased it earlier just just on paper right just like looking at the cards looking at the cards especially individually, because as we mentioned, it does seem like the set doesn't have necessarily a ton of like packages of cards. They just feel very individual. I wasn't as excited about a lot of the cards. Right? I was like, okay, like, what do you do with this? Sure. Like, okay, why do we want this? Sure. But actually getting to play them, I think that there's a lot of different ways that you can use these different cards. And a lot of the cards felt cooler in their play than I expected them to be. So I'm very excited about that. And I think uh, they don't have to be like the most powerful nutty cards to see play or to be put into decks and even be like fun to play. So especially for a first expansion of the year, I think that to me that seems like a success. And 
I, I hope that when we actually get the expansion out, you know, past just their theory crafting, that that trend continues. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, and as I said, I was I was very impressed and felt very good about the new keywords. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in today. And as always, we will see you at the roundtable.